Good evening. I greet you this evening in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is also my Lord and Savior. He has continued to sustain me and take care of me, even up to this far. On this fifth day of August, I glorify his name. And before we go ahead, let us pray. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we thank you for the opportunity of gathering together over this medium of the airwaves, even to hear your word. We pray that, Lord, it may have a place in each and every one of us. Use me as a vessel of honor as I share your word, because I cannot be able to share it at all, except, Lord Jesus, you be with my spirit, with my tongue, mind and body. Help me to share it in a manner that brings glory to your name, that will also be understood by your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are continuing with the gleaning from the book of uh, Proverbs, and um, we have discovered that uh, Proverbs is a very rich, rich uh, book that has many teachings and counsels uh, for us. And uh, today we want to glean from the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verses 30 to 31. And it, we are talking about the commandment, you shall not steal. Proverbs 6, 30 to 31 says this, People do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy himself when he's starving. Yet, when he is found, he must restore sevenfold. He may have to give up all the substance of his house. So we want to talk about the teaching about stealing um, or the teaching against theft. And this finds its anchor in the seventh commandment, Exodus chapter 20, verse 15, that says, you shall not steal. The ten commandments were given as a foundational imperative by the Lord to the children of Israel to ensure that their lives were ordered of him in a manner that would keep them in a right relationship with their God and also in a right relationship with one another. Where is the origin of theft? Or what is the origin of theft? Biblical teaching from Scripture points to the adversary of the Lord, Satan, as being the driving force behind all who steal. John chapter 10, verse 10a says, The thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I came that you might have life and have it in more abundance. When Satan accused Job of only loving God because of his hedge of protection around him, Job was allowed by the Lord to do what he wanted with the life of Job or to, lie, to touch Job's wealth, but not to touch him as an individual. The devil descended on Job's property, and in one day, he orchestrated the destruction of Job's property, theft of his camels, via the Chaldeans or Sabians, as well as the death of Job's 10 children, Job chapter, chapter 1, verse 9 to, through 19. Arising from the foregoing, anyone who steals, knowingly or unknowingly, is under the influence of Satan in the cause of theft. As we saw there that the theft of Job's uh, property was orchestrated by Satan. Many other scriptures talk against theft and the consequences of theft, such as the few that we shall look at. The first one is 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 10, that says this. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Therefore, the one who steals lumps himself with homosexuals and idolaters, those who worship idols. The Bible is clear that such people will not inherit the kingdom of God. Or in other words, they have voluntarily excluded themselves from the kingdom of heaven. Another verse is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 13. It says, do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not hold back the wages of a hired worker overnight. What does this mean? That I should treat my neighbor with the utmost respect. What is his is his. And I should not steal from him or touch it. In the rural areas, if the chicken of your neighbor lays eggs in your shamba, you should return them. 
If the branches of his mango tree that are heavy laden with fruit are overhanging on your side of, of the fence, should you eat them without informing your neighbor? That would be theft. Father, holding back the wages of a hired servant is akin to stealing from him because he or she has already worked or earned those wages. You need to pay him what you agreed. Proverbs chapter 10 verses 2 says, Ill-gotten treasures have no lasting value, but righteousness delivers from death. Food gained by fraud tastes sweet, but one ends up with a mouth full of gravel. Psalms 62 verses 10. Do not trust in extortion or put vain hope in stolen goods. Yesterday, I had the opportunity of reading the Daily Nation, and it carried the story of a family that through tax fraud refund claims, they, they defrauded the American government of about Kenya shillings three billion. The majority of these family members right now are languishing in jail in the United States of America, serving terms, jail terms that are ranging between 14 to three years. The one serving 14, a 14 year term is set to be released in the year 2023 and will be immediately extradicted back to Kenya. Another member of the family who has been evading extradition here in Kenya had, had become a cash cow for corrupt police officers. That is, he would bribe them in order for them not to speak or to declare where he was. But eventually, his money ran dry. And now they, they took him, uh, they offered him up for, for extradition. Uhalifu kweli haulipi chochote. The other, the other verse is Zechariah chapter 5, verse 4, that talks about a curse coming from the Lord being released upon the house of every thief. And Zechariah 4, 5, 4 says this, I will send out the curse, says the Lord of hosts. It shall enter the house of the thief and the house of the one who swears falsely by my name. It shall remain in the midst of his house and consume it with its timber and its stones. This means that the Lord releases a curse upon the house of everyone who steals and destruction becomes manifest in that person's life. Have you ever noticed that those who steal eventually never end up doing well? Something is seemingly at work in their lives, in their families, behind the scenes causing them not to prosper or devouring that ill-gotten wealth. Sometimes, unfortunately, it can be in the form of a long drawn out disease that ends up consuming all the money that they initially had. What is that thing? Zechariah the prophet is saying there is a curse that is released from the Lord on the house of every thief. And the purpose is that of bringing destruction upon that individual and his family. The other consequence of theft is death. Death was and still is a possibility or a consequence of stealing. Exodus chapter 22 verse 2 says, If a thief is found breaking in and he is struck so that he dies, there shall be no guilt for his bloodshed. I remember there's a neighbor of mine back home who told me about his childhood friends whose parents refused to rein them in, refused to direct them in good paths. They ended up becoming truants. They never finished school. And they ended up becoming armed robbers and were eventually shot dead by the police in a place called Dagoretti. And by the time he was giving me this story, it was around 1987, 88. Unfortunately, they had been long dead and buried. Very, very unfortunate. I believe that we have heard of many people who have died in the course of stealing. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, Romans 6.23. Both a spiritual disconnection from God and his physical outworkings in the life of that thief. So what is the advice of the Bible to he who has been stealing? 
the counsel of the Lord to the person who stole is this. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather he must labor, working with his own hands, what is good, so that he will have something to share with the one who has need. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 28. This is true, my friend, because the individual who steals is eating the sweat of others instead of eating his own sweat. And Adam was told by the Lord, by the sweat of your bro, you will eat your food until you return to the ground. Genesis chapter 3, verses 19. The advice, therefore, to all people, especially our young people, is that they should seek to work with their own hands and thereby get the blessings that accrue to those who live righteously in the sight of the Lord. Psalms 37, 16 has this to say, a little that a righteous man has is better than the riches of many wicked people. Meaning that the Lord blesses what you have worked for legitimately and he causes it to far outweigh what wicked people have gathered through dubious means. Then the other thing I want to talk about is restitution from the thief. It is expected that if you have stolen something, you need to restore it. And a classical example is that of Zacchaeus in the Bible, who was a chief tax collector. And when he was visited or he encountered the Lord Jesus Christ, after the Christ had dined with him, Zacchaeus rose from the meal and he says, half of my wealth I give to the poor. And if I have taken something from somebody through, uh, through, uh, um, through theft or through treachery or extortion, I will restore to him fourfold. Why did he say this? The repentance or the conversion of Zacchaeus was confirmed by his tangible evidence of restoring what he had stolen from others via false pretenses. Probably he had inflated their tax figures and pocketed the difference. True repentance even today, my friend, should cause you to restore the stolen thing, be it physical money, be it whatever it is, money or a physical thing, you need to restore it. The profession of salvation lacks taste if you are still retaining and profiting from what you stole. Bite the bullet, my friend, and restore it to its original owner. Even if you stole from an institution, it is still theft. Restore what you have stolen to the institution or to the government. You might say, Pastor, how will I live? I want to say this. The choice is yours. Do, do you want to complete freedom or do you want to remain in bondage for the rest of your life? And an accusation from the enemy because of the stolen things still in your possession. If you want freedom, there's only one way. Restore what you have stolen. I remember um, when, we were, when we got born again, there was the East Africa Revival Movement. And those old men used to give us testimonies of that when they got saved, they returned whatever they had stolen maybe many years ago. I remember even recently hearing of a, of a story of somebody who had stolen iron sheets from the, the, the Mzungu he was working from. But when he got saved, he realized, hey, these Mabatis are not mine. So he went and removed them and took them back. But the Muzungu said, oh, okay, you have done this. I have, I have given them now to you. So he got freedom because he had restored. Do you want to live in bondage or in freedom? I urge live in freedom, not in bondage. Another category of theft is stealing from the Lord. Malachi chapter 3 verses 8 through 10 says, The Lord puts this question to his people. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me, says the Lord. But you say, in which way have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now, says the Lord. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out such a blessing that there will be not 
room enough to receive it. Are we faithful in this area of tithing to the Lord? Or because you have mentioned tithing, some of you have been put off, but this is in the word of God. Your conscience is your true judge. You know whether you have been faithful in this area or not. Financial freedom, my friend, comes to the true believer when you purpose to be faithful in this regard, bringing the full tithe into the storehouse of the Lord. Purpose to be faithful and experience the favor and the protection of the Lord on the remainder of your possessions. Since the adversary of the Christian is the devil or Satan who orchestrates theft of what belongs to the believer, we have a right to petition the heavenly courtroom of our Lord and our Father in heaven for restitution of what has been stolen from us. Remember we started by the verse that says, if a thief is found, he shall restore sevenfold. The thief has been found, and that is Satan. If as a Christian you have been faithful in tithing, then you have a right to, 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 as a Lord, to go to the Lord and ask him to rebuke the devourer for you. And where he has trespassed and stolen of your things, and they shall be restored. Malachi chapter 3, verses 11. Because he says, bring in the full tithe, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. So in, the, in your life, has the devourer been rebuked? Or is he still loose at work in your life and in your possessions? One way of causing the devourer to be rebuked is you being faithful in your tithes and offerings to the Lord. Job is an example of an individual whom God repaid double what he had been stolen and had been destroyed of him by the adversary, Satan. If we read the book of Job, chapter 42, verses 10 through 16, it says, And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. And it says, now the Lord blessed the latter days of Job more than his beginning. My friends, theft is wrong. You shall not steal. So if you have been a victim of stealing, the Bible says whoever stole should not steal no longer but work with his own hands because this is good. Then he shall have to give others who do not have. So if you have been a victim of stealing, may God help you to make amends. May God help you to make amends. And I remember last Sunday as I, I was preaching, I gave an example that uh, in one of the catechism, uh, not, uh, the um, PPI programs as I was teaching, I asked one of the class, classrooms, or the, the children, have, has anybody ever stolen? And they were all honest enough to say that. They all raised their hands and they said they had ever stolen but we prayed with them that they would never steal again. So may God help us. You shall not steal. Rather work with your own hands. If you have also stolen from the Lord, rest, restore what you have stolen and get the blessings that come from the Lord to those who are faithful to him. With those few many words, continue to ponder about this commandment that you shall not steal. Our country is facing problems because of those who steal those who, are, who make false claims, may God help us. Even our contractors who make a, 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 a shorter jobs, they are stealing. And we have this testimony that nothing good will ever come to them. May God help us to not steal, but work with our own hands. The Lord bless you as you ponder over this commandment. Let us pray. Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, you say that your word shall never return to your void. Rather, it shall accomplish what you have purpose for it. You have spoken to us and taught us about the issue of not stealing. Lord, where we have found ourselves, even having it stolen from you, in not being faithful to you, in giving back uh, the, our tithes and offerings to you, we pray that, Lord, you may help us to make amends. And even in our places of work and other places where, Lord, we have felt fallen victim to the lies of the enemy and leading us even to become thieves. We ask that you may forgive us and help us even further to follow the example of Zacchaeus who restored what he had stolen. 
and you, you pronounced and said, today salvation has come into this house. We want salvation to be in our houses, in our families, and experience the freedom that comes from you. Help us in this regard. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ we do pray, trust, believe, and give thanks. Amen and amen.